Hey guys, what's going on? So in today's video, I wanted to kind of combine a few topics into one video. Just questions that I've gotten asked quite a few times. Uh, things about uh, resto druids, your healing rotation, um, you know, what talents you should be running at this point in the game, and then also healing parses. So I just kind of want to combine all of this into kind of one large video. Uh, I'll provide timestamps right here so you can skip around to what is interesting to you uh, and we'll try and get through this video and hopefully you'll leave uh, having a little bit more insight when it comes to resto druids okay guys i am recording this after i actually created this video uh, i didn't have any kind of script so i just you know spoke from you know what i wanted to talk about uh, my thoughts all that stuff so it's a little bit ranty rambly uh, in terms of putting out timestamps, the timestamps are going to be roughly when I talk about it, but to be honest, uh, the whole video is just kind of rambling about healing and resto druids right now in classic. So um, if you like that kind of style of video, um, feel free to watch. The, the video itself isn't quite as important. It's just some footage. So if you want to watch this in the background as you farm or um, you know do something else, feel free. Uh, but yeah, enjoy guys. So there's going to be three specs that you can run. One will be Moon Glow and NS. And then there's going to be another, which is Deep Resto, uh, Improved Rejuvenation. And then the last one that you could be running is um, Heart of the Wild NS. Now, to rank these, I would definitely put Heart of the Wild NS as the lowest and the least efficient um, healing spec that you can do. However, it is the most... Um, you know, wide ranging spec. So it's great for, you know, when you get out of raid to go play your druid in other aspects of the game and not have to respec. So I personally am running Heart of the Wild NS right now just because healing in my raid at the moment matters so little. Uh, and I'll get into that in the video. Uh, but that's what I'm running right now so I can go out and do PvP and, you know, farm and have fun in the game outside of raiding without having to respec every single uh, raid lockout. Um, that's what I'm doing now. Obviously, when AQ comes out, I'll be running uh, a different spec. I believe I will be going Heart of the Wild, or I'll, I'll be going, excuse me, Moon Moon Glow NS. Um, that's just my personal uh, preference, but I'm going to dive into both of those specs uh, here now so we can talk about kind of the ins and outs. So the reason I believe that Heart of the Wild NS is your lowest tier of healing specs, um, obviously you're not picking up the improved uh, healing. Now it's only 10% base heals, uh, but this does add up. Um, so that is one thing to consider. And also you don't have the improved uh, mana efficiency of your heals that you're getting in Moon Glow from the balance tree. So your heals are actually costing more mana. Yes, you have a larger mana pool. So basically, uh, what's going to happen is the percentage of mana that your heals cost you should be relatively similar if you had moon glow. However, um, your mana regeneration and your drinking time that it takes you to uh, drink to full between pulls is going to be longer. So you do have a larger mana pool, but your spells are more costly. And obviously it takes longer for you to regenerate that mana outside of combat and in combat. Um, so you're a little bit less mana efficient. Uh, now, this shouldn't matter uh, a huge amount. However, it is something that plays into um, how fast you can run uh, a raid. And then also if you're uh, taking longer on bosses and you're actually having to go through mana consumables, so things like uh, major mana potions or dark runes, uh, these are actually giving you back a smaller percentage of your mana as you have such a large mana pool. Um, that when you take a healing potion, you know, maybe it used to give you 30% uh, of your mana pool back. And now with uh, Heart of the Wild NS, it's only giving you 20 or 25%. So these are all things to consider. I do think that Heart of the Wild NS allows, uh, you know, a great ability to not have to respec every week and enjoy the game fully. So if you aren't like a hardcore raider, I would suggest this spec if you like to go, you know, tank some dun five man dungeons in your free time or go out and do some PvP as Feral, or anything like that. It's just kind of a well-rounded spec. So that's where I would put that into, the, into the, the situation, is kind of if you're looking for a more uh, full 
gameplay aspect with a with a druid definitely go heart of the wild ns now just talking of heart of the wild ns of being kind of like a well-rounded spec the next spec that is still fairly well-rounded and allows you to do a lot of things is you know a moon glow ns this is going to go deep down into the balance tree to pick up nature's grace and moon glow and then it's going to go into the resto tree with the rest of your points now this will allow you to get reduced costs of your healing spells and also get that uh, chance on crit I mean, when you crit, you get a faster cast. So these things are going to benefit you, obviously, in raiding when it comes to healing, but also going down into the balance tree allows you to have a little bit more fun in PvP and also in PvE content where you're soloing. Uh, you're going to have a better uh, time soloing things when you're not like a deep resto build. So this is a great spec if you are looking to uh, have very very efficient healing uh, where you're not having to use a lot of mana consumables uh, you're spamming a lot of rank 3 and rank 4 healing touches uh, and you're using your rejuvenation uh, spell um, this is a great uh, spec also if you have 8 out of 8 tier 2 uh, because of your improved uh, rejuvenation time so those things are also something to consider this is my favorite spec personally for actually healing uh, I'll go into uh, the improved re regrowth spec after this, but I will say that this spec for me personally is my favorite to play. So lastly, we're going to talk about improved regrowth. Now, improved regrowth is a great spec. It's going to allow you to get off very fast casts, which is very important if you are, you know, constantly having to battle for getting heal sniped from other people in your um, raid. And also, it's a great spec for parsing and getting some really good healing numbers, especially if you make sure you get your world buffs and you get all those crit buffs. So things like Songflower, Oni head buff, uh, you know, what else am I thinking? Uh, the crit buff from uh, DMT. So all of these crit buffs are very, very important and they'll allow you to crit more. And then you're proccing your nature's grace ability uh, quite frequently, which is also increasing your healing speed. So all of this combined allows you to really pump out some great healing numbers. Uh, you're getting big crits with your uh, regrowths and then also the hot healing portion of the regrowth is nice. Now I will say this one's not so much my favorite spec as uh, it's kind of mana intensive you're going to if you have any kind of long period fights uh, you're going to have to be using uh, mana potions dark runes uh, demonic runes those kind of things to to get some mana back you might also have to be using your um, innervate on yourself rather than putting it on one of your priests in your raid uh, I think this spec also is much better on the alliance side as you're not having to compete with shamans and their chain healing. So with shamans chain healing and constantly topping off your raid, uh, you're not going to get any benefit out of the, re the, the regrowth hot portion, so the healing over time portion that comes at the end of your regrowth. Uh, it's obviously not as effective when you have shamans just um, you know healing the entire group and topping everyone off so that healing portion is basically just wasted on overhealing um, so that's just kind of how I feel about the healing situation right now uh, there's going to be a lot more group and AoE healing that comes out in um, AQ so this is great for druids obviously we're going to be able to utilize our hots much more frequently at the moment right now I pretty much only use hots on lab packs in Blackwing Lair uh, and then pretty much only on my off tanks in Blackwing Lair who don't have a lot of world buffs. And that's one thing I'm going to talk about is how I think that healing as a resto druid is very dependent on the kind of raid comp you're running. So right now, if you look at world logs of the raid group that I'm running with, we are running with a lot of healers. Uh, yes, we have some shamans that are pretty much just totem twisting. So they're basically... Um, you know part of their rotation is just putting down totems to try and get the maximum dps out of our warriors and rogues however i will say that as a druid in a raid that has a lot of healers it's very hard to enjoy the class because a lot of your heals are heal over time um, or hots which obviously make the druid a unique class 
However, if you're not able to utilize those hots because everyone is always constantly being topped off on health, uh, spamming out rank three and rank four healing touch is pretty mundane. My healing touch rank three is the one I use the most because it's the fastest and it's one that I can reliably get off before another person has sniped my heal. And obviously my rank three healing touch is doing somewhere between, uh, you know, 500 to 600 uh, for the heal. And that's really not that, uh, you know, great. It's efficient, obviously, for mana, but the heal itself isn't that um, impactful and it's not that much fun in terms of rating. Right now, I feel like I'm just a fairy fire buff bot and then also putting Mark of the Wild on the raid. So I've definitely had more fun in Molten Core. We had a lot of our warriors that were ranking in pvp so they didn't have time to get world buffs so they weren't close to buff cap so that i could actually use my hots on the the tanks uh, and then we also had less healers overall so if you look back at my phase one and phase two parses i was you know parsing very well as a resto druid because i was actually able to use my whole kit i was getting parses in um you know i think my average parses were around 80 87 i think and then most of the time I was I was still parsing on a lot of fights um, into the 90s. And I have all 99s. I, th I believe I have all 99s on phase one and phase two of Molten Core. Uh, it's just when it comes to people getting buffs every week, you know, world buffs, and they're getting close to buff cap, you can't even put rejuvenation or regrowth on your main tank. So you're essentially healing people with... Uh, a rank three healing touch because any other rank of your healing touches is just too slow to reliably get off um, so i'm doing very little healing and i'm just sitting there buffing or debuffing bosses with fairy fire and making sure everyone's buffed with mark of the wild so my rating experience in the last month or so has not been ideal uh, if i could I would like to go a different spec. However, that just means that I have to do more work um, in terms of, you know, going out and getting gear, getting hit capped, uh, making sure I get world buffs, doing all that kind of stuff uh, just to do like average DPS where I would rather just reroll and play a different class, to be honest, in a raiding environment. Uh, but I don't want to leave my raid as I really enjoy the people I play with. So that alone is is worth the the trade off. Hopefully healing becomes a little bit more uh, enjoyable in a Q. But with the amount of healers our raid has, um, I don't know how how uh, that will look here in the future. Now, the great news is healing is definitely still fun, probably for a lot of you. If your raid does not have quite as many healers or not as many shamans, or if you're alliance side, you're going to be able to utilize your hots uh, much more. So you're actually being able to see the healing from those hots and you're going to just have a much more enjoyable experience as a druid. So when it comes to parses, I wouldn't worry about parsing too much because it matter it like parsing, especially as healer, not so much as DPS, but as a healer, parsing really matters. Um, or I mean, it really just, is affected by how many healers you have in your raid, how quickly you guys are going through the raid, and how much unnecessary raid damage people are taking. For example, on fights where uh, there's a lot of AOE damage or um, there's mechanics where you can take unnecessary damage, uh, the joke in our raid is that we have people specifically stand in said AOE so that our healing parses look better. That's how many healers we have that uh, we just have a lot of overhealing. Now, I'm not sure exactly why we have so many healers. We had uh, we had like low healing numbers at one point, so I think we tried to recruit more healers and we ended up just with too many, um, but now that's just kind of our roster. Uh, it, all, it obviously makes it nice because we have very few deaths uh, when we raid, but this really will affect the, how much fun healing is as a druid, as your healing spells the casted ones are quite slow and your hots, obviously, if you're just getting them overhealed, it's it's not much fun either. So if you're going to uh, look for a guild now, say you're not in one, make sure you look to see how many healers are on the core roster 
and, and what the healing classes are. If you have a lot of shamans uh, and if you just have a lot of healers in general, you're not going to be able to do quite as much uh, raid healing and your hots are going to be uh, quite useless. And then also you need to see how hardcore your guild is. If your guild is very, very hardcore and they're getting buff capped and they're getting world buffs every week, uh, your main tanks and even some of your DPS are not going to want you to hot them as it's going to push off some of their world buffs as there's a buff cap of 32 buffs. So if someone is um, getting close to a 32 buff cap, they're not going to want you to put uh, a rejuvenation on them, right? They're going to want to allow, uh, for example, a Wind Fury totem buff is going to be much more uh, important for them than uh, rejuvenation. So you're basically just told not to heal them uh, with hots, which obviously makes sense, but it makes the experience as a druid uh, not that much fun because they're a fish they're basically taking away some of the abilities that you have in your kit and you're not really even allowed to use them so those are all things to consider when it comes to um, raid healing uh, what spec you're going to play uh, what kind of group you're going to join you know in terms of running with a guild and whether or not you want to have like a hardcore raiding experience or you'd rather just kind of have more of a casual one um, so hopefully that helps with those questions and now the last part of this video we're going to go into healing and healing parses so when we talk about parses parsing is where you're basically measured against other players and your healing done is basically calculated against other players so if you're parsing very high uh, which would be you know above an 80 parse which would put you into a top percentile of players, uh, those healing parses mean that you're doing better than 80% of the rest of the players out there. So you're basically in uh, the t the top you know 20% of players. Now, obviously, uh, not every raid out there is parsing. So technically, already if you're if someone in your raid is parsing, it probably means that uh, your raid is a little bit above average in general because very very. Um, low skilled raids or just pickup raids uh, just random groups are probably not going to uh, parse their content so it's already parsing already is a little bit above just like um really uh, basic uh, raids and players out there so that's something to consider as well but what i want to talk to you today about with parsing is your healing and how you can he parse higher with healing and how you also should not worry too much about healing parses in terms of specific fights. So there's some fights out there that you should be using other mechanics. So one would be uh, a fight like Cro-Magus, right? Depending on how many healers you have, uh, you as a druid have the ability to cleanse poisons and you have the ability and you have uh, also have the ability to decurse. So in this fight, you really shouldn't be doing too much healing. Uh, it would be a great idea to just keep your hots up on the tank if you are able to. As I said, uh, if the tank has a lot of world buffs and doesn't want you to hot them, then again, you're basically just going to be uh, decursing, uh, cleansing, all that kind of stuff. So your parsing on Chromagus might be lower in general, but you're doing a good job and you're doing what is needed of you in the raid. Um, these are things to consider now if you are looking to just parse as high as possible my suggestion is to kind of look at the fight and look at the mechanics so if you know that a uh, fight requires a tanking mechanic where another off tank is going to pick up threat from the main tank what you can do in this situation is precast a regrowth right before you know that tank is going to or the the boss is going to make a switch onto the off tank this means that as soon as that tank takes that initial um, hit and it's probably takes about 15 percent of their health then your regrowth basically heals them up right away for that amount now the problem that you run into with this is that if other players in your raid are also trying to parse high, uh, they're going to be doing things like pre-shielding the, the tank with a pre-shield. They're also going to be pre-casting a heal. So again, you're actually able to parse higher if you raid with people that are less competent. Now, I, I know that sounds a little mean, but it is really true. If you were to go out there and play in a pickup group 
um, and you are one of the only healers, and you're saying running molten core, and you had someone parse that fight and log it, you would see that your heals and your just your overall healing parses are going to be pretty high just because people are taking unnecessary damage. Uh, your healers are not quite as efficient. Uh, they're not pumping out quite as much healing. Uh, um, and just all of these things factor into you having better healing parses. So while damage is definitely more of a personal thing for the player, um, you know, rogue, say you're a rogue and you're doing DPS on a fight, it's not quite as important the rest of the, the, the players in the raid. Um, yes, it will matter on threat. Your, your tank needs to be holding threat so you can do uh, enough DPS. However, when it comes to healing, everything else in the raid matters. So I would not focus too much on your healing parses. There are obviously things you can do to improve your healing parses, um, but overall, your healing parses are not quite important. They're not, I mean, most people don't even really focus on healing parses, so I wouldn't worry about them. If you are a druid and you're parsing fairly low, that is not a problem. Probably what's happening is uh, your other healers are picking up uh, a lot of the heals. You're getting sniped on heals. Uh, and just know that as a druid, the main thing you're there for is fairy fire, mark of the wild, um, your battle res, and also just because you're there to s soak up some of the loot, to be honest. Uh, druids are great. They're going to get better in TBC. We'll have a lot of really interesting druid content um, coming up for uh, the Burning Crusade, so I'll make sure I cover all that stuff. Uh, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.